In today's video, I spend another 100 days in my Minecraft single player world, and oh boy, it's a good one. So, make sure to hit that subscribe button, or don't, you really don't have to, but please do. Anyway, let's get started. So, day 1400, we're back with our new mansion, our castle, our house, everything's here, even my best friend Gerald. But what's not there is redstone. I have no redstone. So I immediately went searching for redstone as I needed redstone. So I went down into some of my old strip mines, which I had around and about, to see if I could find some redstone or actually mine some up as well to get a bit. Before flying back to my bedroom, where we're going to start this next 100-day chapter, as you can see here. And obviously, we went back to get some redstone straight away. I just wanted more redstone. And here you can see me digging up all the redstone in a big pile and then digging it down again lovely jubbly that's a lot of redstone we're not even a minute into this video and i've said redstone 10 times but what do i need this redstone for well i want to sort out this sorting system in here we started work on this in the 1400 days video and you need a lot of redstone for this there's another one for the counter so i made a load of different like comparators etc and loads of things that i needed to make this sorting system work and then we got placing all that stuff in to this diorite shell here. Diorite, I know what you're saying. Ooh, that's disgusting. Well, that's why it's going to be hidden behind this entire area. This is basically the same as our old sorting system. However, a lot bigger and I actually only managed to complete the bottom layer because there is so much stuff you need for each one. I think it's 77 chests on each layer maybe, maybe a bit less than that, or maybe a bit more. I can't remember but either way it requires a lot of redstone and a lot of water, ice etc and you can see here it's all set up and raring to go. But I wanted to build something special into this one to make it better than my old system and what I'm going to do is make a shulker loader. Basically you just put your shulker in the shulker loader and then it will empty that shulker into the chest and sort it all out for you. It's beautiful. It's automated redstone at its finest and it looks like a complete mess as you can see here. I'm not going to try and explain how it works because to be honest with you, I don't really know. But I also added a regular chest deposit box as you can see here that will deposit the spruce logs and sort it out into this chest here. And then you can also put the spruce logs in a shulker box, put a shulker box in this chest here. The shulker will be unloaded and the spruce logs will be taken out of it and put into this chest here as as you can see, lovely jubbly, and then the shulker, which is empty, will come out in the middle chest there as well. And you can see here how it works, kind of. There's just some redstone and pistons and stuff. But we've still got a massive gap on the back of that base. We didn't finish the back of it last time. However, behind the back of it, I wanted to build a mountain range. I've never done this before and I thought it'd be a good fun challenge. So we started outlining some of the mountains we're going to have here and oh boy this is a big project. This is going to take a long time to do but you can kind of see what we're going to have. Loads of different peaks etc. It's looking pretty cool and at the time I thought you know what I'm going to use some green terracotta that looked really cool to have on that mountain. I changed my mind later on but here you can see me heading out on the never roof here far away to where I knew a mesa was because I converted the coordinates and I made a nice little path here and as you can see a mesa it worked lovely I put some torches leading the way back to our portal and then I gathered my beacon and headed back all the way to the mesa where we placed down that emerald beacon put on that haste to and got mining some terracotta with our efficiency five it's instant mine it's very nice indeed and very satisfying although you can't really see me mining much of it because it was all underground as that's where the plain terracotta was but i got a few shulker boxes worth went and fixed up my pickaxes as they're both getting kind of low with my end palm in the end lovely noises ended up back at spawn because i forgot to set my spawn point and then went and got some cactus from our cactus farm to make ourselves some green dye another thing i wanted was some moss blocks and to get moss blocks you need bone mill and I didn't have any bone mill so I went and found this skeleton spawner which I'd saved the coordinates of in a document I had a long time ago. We went down, we converted it into a skeleton spawner which you can see in this time lapse here. Very simple, I've made this so many times before, it's very easy and very effective and it works very nicely because all you need to do is sit there and spam your sword and I decided to AFK here for a little bit to get myself a load of bones. Ended up going actually AFK by accident as you can see here and uh, we managed to collect a load of bones still though so I was happy with the end of this as you can see in these chests enough to run a moss farm but we don't have a moss farm yet what are you talking about Joel that's right we're gonna build 
a moss farm. I decided to build the one that I'd built in my Empire's SMP series. Very simple to build. Creates enough moss to last you a long time, especially when it's just me alone here in this single player world. This is all the stuff you need to build it and it's very simple. You have to make a stone generator using some water and some lava as you can see here. These pistons will then push the stone along and then later you place a moss block on that stone. You bone mill that moss block, it creates more moss blocks. Voila! It's beautiful. It's magic. It's science. It's not. It's just kind of simple redstone stuff. Well, it's not to me, but to big redstone people is apparently quite simple. I wouldn't know. I suck at redstone. I just copy tutorials. But here we're just making the system to flush out the moss so that we can collect it in some chests. And we're just connecting all the redstone up so that the timing's all perfect. And here you can see the stone being generated. Watch it generate. Oh, lovely. Look at that stone being generated. But there's our moss block we're going to place down and bow mill with this dispenser here. Oh, gosh. Isn't redstone magical? Imagine having to bow mill stuff before redstone existed. I couldn't. I couldn't imagine that. But here we are loading up all our bone mill into our system here and we set it off going and we start collecting that wonderful, wonderful moss. My new favourite block. Well, one of my new favourite blocks. It's great because it makes mossy cobblestone, which is my favourite block. But one single chest is not going to be enough, so I extended this downwards and I also made a little hopper system as well to put all the seeds and moss carpet and stuff you don't really want. And this is all happening underneath the mountain. This is where we place this farm and speaking of the mountain, we did a little bit more planning, as you can see here, and it's looking very pointy and very mountainy, I guess you could say. But I had to correct some parts of it as I started again from scratch here. But we actually started placing some blocks. I'm using some deep slate, I'm using some stone, and I'm using some moss. The moss to make some like little green patches, the deep slate to add a little bit of texture to it, and then the stone as the main block for the mountain. I used so much stone while building this thing. And to be honest, this mountain range isn't that big. Like, you may think it's quite big, but I've seen my friend Fwip build some ridiculous mountains, and this doesn't even come close, to be honest. However, with a big mountain, mountain range like this where you've done a lot of terraforming you need a lot of torches to light it up so here you can see me mining down some coal to make myself a load of torches to also make torches you need wood so that's why I collected some wood and here we have a lot of torches which are going to be used to light up the underneath of this which was already starting to spawn mobs which we don't like because creepers spawn they ruin your terraforming we hate that do you know what we also hate leaving the back of a base not finished so I wanted to finish this base and like that certain YouTuber. No idea who that is. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. Anyway, we started building up the walls here and I wanted to make this very simple as it's going to be hidden mostly by the mountains. So there's no point in having windows. I also went back to my 1.17 area and remembered I had a skeleton farm there, which I completely forgot about. So that felt pretty stupid. I just made a whole new one this episode. This world is so big now and has so many different things in it that it's just like, I forget. All right. Okay. I forget. But anyway, I had to go collect some tuft. I also found some diamonds while I was collecting some tuft as I wanted to use some tuft for the rest of this build here. Here we are building up the layers gradually. We also needed some dark oak wood because a lot of dark oak wood is used in this build, including stairs and the logs here. So we placed those down lovely jubbly and we got placing the calcite as well. Of course, we had to light up some of this as I saw some mob spawning and then we uh, completely ran out of calcite after placing a load. So I had to head back to my 1.17 section, which every time I have to go through this portal, fly along the never roof, then fly out. It's a massive pain. It takes like two minutes to get there, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have to do it multiple times, it's a lot. Either way, I was clearing some geodes there and I fell through into some lava, which you'd never expect. Almost died, but by the way, not died yet this episode. That's the first. We're almost 40 days in. But anyway, after gathering up a load of stuff, we headed home through our portal and we got placing that calcite back on our wall. Had to go collect some more dark oak wood to place on the top here and then finally we can get working on the roof in a second, which I'm actually going to use some of the terracotta for it came in useful after all on my way to collect some dye for it i found these bees what the heck is going on here this is mental anyway dye for more magenta terracotta for this roof which is quite a lot of roof I also went into the nether as I had to collect some warped wood, which we use a little bit of in this project. I also checked on my iron farm to find out it's producing iron. A lot of iron. So much iron that it was overflowing. So I decided to place them into some blocks and take them home with me and put them in my sorting system. And then I placed the final bits of dark oak wood, as you can see here. Did some more lighting up and then we got placing the roof. And I decided to time lapse this as it was a lot of materials 
tiles being placed. Here you can see we went for a sort of different style on the back, but we did finish off those towers there and also place those sort of, you know, trap doors and stairs with the dark oak, as you can see here, to make it look quite funky. And there we have it. The back of the base is done. I know it looks very plain, but don't worry. It's going to be hidden by a mountain soon. Oh, and I also had to go place a load of torches as mobs are spawning again. Yay, mobs. We love mobs. Just kidding. We hate mobs. What I also hate doing is collecting deep slate. It's very annoying, mainly because I've got to go back to my 1.17 zone, then go back to my mine, and then it's not insta mine. So even with a beacon, you can't insta mine this. So I decided to just not use a beacon and instead just mine it normally, which didn't take too long to collect like a couple of shulker boxes worth, as you can see here. Very boring, but needed to be done. And with our deep slate, we had collected cobbled deep slate, of course. We headed back home. However, when we got there, we didn't work on the mountain. Instead, I decided to collect myself some wood as well as find some grass in some shulkers and work on the front terraforming as this thing was just completely floating because I built it that way. Why did I build it that way? I don't know. But either way, we did some terraforming on the right hand side of it here, doing some sort of like rocky bits and also bringing the grass all the way down to the river length as well and then on this bit we did a little bit of an overhang as well which I always like doing and it makes a massive difference from that floaty texture we had before look how cool that looks now I'm happy with it but at this point I was getting a bit sick of terraforming so I decided to head back through my portal past my pride flag and I wanted to do something relaxing and what better to relax myself than killing another hundred horses and this is how it went <laughs> Hundred horses killed, yeah, baby. And in case you're wondering what song I hear in my head when I kill my horses, that's the song I hear. It's just happiness, pure happiness. Either way, we made our way back to our portal and headed home. Because by the way, to kill horses now, I've got to go out like 10,000 blocks because I've killed them all nearby. But now we were nice and relaxed. It was time to build some more of this mountain here. And this is such a like tricky process because I've never built a mountain range before. So it was all like a learning curve for me. And to be honest, this mountain range, I am happy with it. I think it looks pretty good. But I think in the future, I'd probably go bigger and better and make it just look a little bit different as it's just a bit too pointy in some places and it's just not very even. But after a good few days building there, we of course ran out of stone because look how much stone we're using. So I had to head into my mines to collect some more stone, which I did, put some in my shulker boxes, brought it home. This was a very continuous process that I kept doing, but I also need some more grass and I'd actually ran out of grass entirely. So I decided to write poo in the grass here and then collect myself a load of grass. Look at that. It's grass being collected. It's actually quite satisfying to watch. And with our grass that we had written poo in, we took it home and placed the shulkers ready to be placed around on the left hand side of the front of the house. But before we did that, for some reason, something came over me. I decided to kill this sheep here and collect its meat. And then I cooked its meat on a campfire next to my dog where my tent was at the start of this series. And then I got the meat off the fire and I, I ate it. I don't know why I did this, but it got me ready for the build. I even gave some to my dog. And then I looked at the left hand side and I was like, ooh, shaky, shaky, shaky. And now we're building again. Look at that. More terraforming on this side. This time, more grass terraforming. Not so much stone as this side is more like sort of slanted downwards we don't have the massive drop off area here because we can reach the ground with ease look at that it's looking so much better now it's not floating anymore we love to see it and what do you do when you've terraformed a massive area you place torches to stop mobs spawning in we already have enough entities in this area from all the torches we don't want mobs on top of it i looked at my mountain there because i was scared of it and then i decided to look at my diamond beacon because it gave me happiness and then i went through my portal because guess what we're going back to the 1.17 area gosh this is very annoying but I decided to get Fred and George as I felt bad leaving them in that cave there and we went on a little adventure 
through my 1.17 area and then through my portal to the never roof. Look at them go through the portal. Aren't they cute, Fred and George? In my head, they were saying, you know what, George? I think we've outgrown our education. And George says, Fred, you know what? I was thinking just the exact same thing. And then they assioed their broomsticks and they went home to wherever. I don't know. Either way, we brought them back through the portal here and traveled with them all the way back to our new mansion. They tried to escape from me here, but luckily I managed to get a hold of them. And walking along this place makes me realize how big this area actually is and how much I built. So it was quite a nice little sort of journey there we took on. And then I decided to put them in a boat each, but however, they got stuck in the same boat, but I thought that was adorable and they looked really cute there. So I decided to leave them there. I then went to check on my moss farm as it had been working quite a while now. And I managed to get myself a load of moss and also seeds, azalea, moss carpet. So I put some into compost. I should have done this all automated, but you know what? I couldn't be bothered. But what I can be bothered to do is build more of the mountain, and this is the longest time lapse yet. We spent a good 10 or so days here building this mountain. It is very, very slow and tedious to build this thing. You can see here, every time that sun goes down, 10 minutes passes in real life. So we have spent a long time on this thing and it's looking decent. It's looking decent. However, it's still not finished as you can see there because once again, I ran out of materials. It also looks a bit weird, but you know what? I'm just gonna go with it. I've spent like five hours on it at this point. So if I told myself it didn't look nice, then I would be very sad. So I'm just gonna pretend that it does look cool even though it looks a bit weird. Anyway, we decided to make ourselves a flower farm as I wanted to add something onto just the plain grass at the front. So I went and gathered up all the materials I needed to make said flower farm. And then we flew off to a flower forest where I thought, you know what? We can collect all the flowers, not just, you know, poppies and corn flowers and dandelions, but instead interesting flowers as well. So I cleared out some area here and made myself a flower farm, which I've never done before, but it's very simple. All you do is place some pistons here and pistons here and then some redstone note block and an observer and then basically just the pistons go doo, 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 like that. I don't know why I'm doing an impersonation. You will literally see in a few minutes what it's going to do. And there is a dispenser which bone mills the grass as well, which we obviously need for the flowers. So once I set that up and put the hoppers in so I could put my bone mill into it and fenced it off because the tutorial I was watching said you should do this. I don't know why, but I, I, it does. Either way, collected myself some bones from back home and then flew back to the flower forest. And are you ready for a really loud and annoying noise? Well, good, here it comes. That's annoying. Anyway, that's enough of that. And oh, by the way, turns out it only gave me alliums and, you know, there's other rubbish flowers. I can't remember what it's called. So that was a waste of time. <laughs> Glad I built that flower farm. Either way, went and got myself some bone mill, went and collected myself some rose bushes as well as some lilacs and some peonies and also some spruce saplings to start bone milling as I wanted to make a sort of like nice little forest here at the front of my house. And I placed down some lovely flowers, the lilacs as well. And of course, don't forget those rose bushes and also let's place down some blooming alliums as I've got loads of those now, which I really love. Yay, what a great flower farm. Either way, we bow milled it as well to make it look nice. And does it look nice? Yeah. It looks pretty nice. I'm quite happy with that. I think it looks quite cool. But what doesn't look nice is that floaty mountain in the background. So I decided to go with some deep slate and some stone and we finished it off. Oh my gosh. This bit here was painful. Just trying to get it all the way up to that really steep point and try and make it look nice. I think it looks okay. I don't know. I don't really know what, what it looks like. I'm not really a big fan of the middle bit. It's kind of got two points. It looks a bit dodgy. If I had creative mode, I'd probably change that entirely, but we don't have creative mode and we're already on day. 1500 and you know what from this angle i quite like it i think it looks quite cool and here you can see it says 1500 days here are some of my stats which i zoomed through really quickly and then here are some other statistics as well including times dropped which you'll see in a second for some reason i've dropped like 18,000 rotten flesh somehow i don't know how i've done that but i've done it and here we are in our tent where it all started. And now something I don't really ever do on these videos. I am in game. This is me. I am pressing buttons right now. Listen to my mouse click as you see the thing move. Normally I do the voiceover all afterwards, but we need to have a little bit of a talk. As you probably heard my frustration in the video that this area here is all from 1.16. So when we dig down, we only have stone. We don't have any of the cool new deep slate, tough blocks, etc. So every time we have to go through our portal over there. And to be honest, 
it's kind of like frustrating. So, although there are things unfinished in this world, not the back of the mountain though, that's definitely finished. Just don't look, okay? But things like the interior of here and the sorting system, which I never really got set up fully, but it would have been very cool. I think this might be the last video on this world, unless... For some reason, I want to continue it in the future. We've had some good times on this world. I can't believe we started out with that tent there, and now we have all of this. And if I can get this fully in, let me see if I can. Just look at that. That is ridiculous. The amount of work. Oh my gosh, I love it. However, 1.18 is just around the corner. If I want to get any of the new world generation, I'm going to have to go out like 30,000 blocks and... If I die in that area, my spawn will be 30,000 blocks away. So I think when 1.18 comes around, I'm going to start a new single player series where we'll be doing the same format. Maybe not 100 days, but maybe like we'll start a project, we'll finish that project, etc. And we'll do it in the same style as we do the 100 days series. This will be the end of this world, as you know. If you want to see a world tour, let me know in those comments. I might do another world tour and maybe a download with that as well. But we've achieved a lot in this world. And I think if I was to do a new survival world, I'd probably go bigger and I'd go better. As although this is big, I've got big ideas and we could build something truly epic in the next update. And hopefully that next update world could stick around for a few versions as well, as I doubt there's going to be a huge terrain update anytime after that one. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for supporting this series. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and comment and I shall see you another time. Oh, and don't worry, here's a few shaders fly-throughs.